Give us your reaction to the U.S.-Mexico trade deal as far as you know it. Have you seen texts sure. yet, first of all? Well, David, it's good to be with you. No, we have not seen texts. We've only gotten a summary. We've been told that this has not yet been finalized, so we have not yet gotten the required information. As the secretary indicated, there's a required consultation with Congress that has not taken place yet, so it's way too early to judge the specifics. But we all know that NAFTA was entered into during a different time, and it needs to be updated, uh, particularly as it relates to labor and environmental issues. Uh, and it's good to see that progress has been made between the United States and Mexico, but the question mark is where is Canada? This is a three-party talk and a three-party agreement. So it's hard to understand how you can proceed with two parties to an agreement without Canada also being part of it. Which is a key question, obviously, even as Canadian representatives are in Washington right now negotiating. From Congress's point of view or from your point of view, does it make sense? Is it possible to go forward with just a two-party agreement and leave Canada out? President Trump seemed to suggest that yesterday. I don't know how that could be done other than terminating NAFTA and entering into a bilateral agreement, which leaves us without an agreement with Canada, uh, which could have really negative consequences. I think we're, we're much better having agreements in place, and therefore it's critically important uh, that we have uh, an agreement with Canada. Uh, obviously, the devil's in the details. We'll have to all learn the details. But at this point, in broad brush, are you encouraged by the fact that it appears that President Trump is reaching terms with Mexico, is working on terms with Canada, seems to be getting along with the EU at the moment. They're still early on, as you heard Secretary Ross say, but really maybe marshalling the troops, as it were, to really face Canada, uh, Ch China, beg your pardon, on some much bigger trade issues. Well, certainly I'm pleased the progress has been made. Uh, I'm certainly pleased that we've increased the local content. That's certainly a very important issue that we had w with Mexico. I'm pleased to see that some of the labor provisions have made it into this agreement. We've been talking about the fact that when NAFTA was entered into, we did not have labor as central parts of trade agreement. Now these labor standards are finding their way into the agreement. That's really positive news. So what I've heard so far, that's, that's that I'm pleased to hear that. But let's look at the details, what concessions have been made to Mexico, what does the total agreement look like, and can we bring Canada into a three-way agreement? What happens if we don't? There's still a lot of questions out there. A lot of questions out there. Do you have any sense of the timeline and how that timeline might fit with Mr. Obrador taking over as the new president of Mexico after the first of the year? Well, I, I think it's clear that this is being timed so that it will be after the new administration in Mexico has taken over and will be in the next Congress. We'll have to consider the, the agreement itself. Uh, I think that is, uh, as a practical matter, that's the only way they could have done it. Uh, let's keep things moving in a productive way, but let's share as much information as possible with Congress and the American people. That has not been done yet. Senator Cardin, let's move to a, another subject that you are very involved in, and that's the Russians and the sanctions against Russia, even proposals in the United States Senate to actually have some very draconian, if I can put it that way, sanctions if, in fact, the Russians start interfering with our elections come November. Where is that process? Well, I, those sanctions were meant to be very clear signal to Mr. Putin not to interfere in our democratic system and in our free elections. He is still meddling in our elections. He meddled in 2016. He's continuing to meddle in 2018. We know that. We've gotten direct information about it. We want the president to stand up to Mr. Putin and say, no, that will not be accepted, and we will impose the strongest sanctions against you if you dare continue to interfere in our elections. That's what the CATSA statute passed by Congress Congress early last year was all about that I was part of. Included in that statute were sanctions that the president has yet to impose, which are mandatory sanctions. So unless we see a change of behavior by Mr. Putin, which we haven't seen to date, we should impose maximum sanctions against Russia. I also want to ask you about North Korea, because there are developments even today about North Korea. Apparently, Secretary Pompeo did not go to North Korea in response to a letter from the North Koreans saying, we're not going forward, we're going backwards. Where is the status of those talks at this point, as far as you know? 
Well, we, we have very little information on this. Uh, we had one hearing in our committee. It was not a very in-depth hearing. Uh, we do know and do support uh, diplomacy to try to resolve the crisis on the Korean Peninsula as it relates to the nuclear North Korea. There are a lot of other issues with North Korea. There are human rights violations, uh, what they do is, as far as uh, their cyber attacks on us. So there's a lot of other issues involved. But we have yet to see any real progress. Uh, the president was, had a nice photo op in Singapore, but we didn't see any specific progress made to uh, North Korea uh, uh, giving us a full accounting of their nuclear program and having a, a, a way to eliminate it. That's what we need to see. Uh, so before there's any more photo ops, let's see real progress uh, on uh, North Korea's actions to get rid of their nuclear weapons. And finally, Senator Cardin, I'm mindful that this is a week of mourning, really, in yes. the Capitol for your late colleague, Senator John McCain. There's a proposal now from Senator Schumer, as well as some Republicans, that maybe we should rename the Russell Building after Senator McCain. Are you in favor of that, and could that actually get done? Well, I think it would be the right signal. Uh, Senator McCain represents the best tradition of the United States Senate. He showed how you could be passionate, hold on to your commitments, speak for your values, and do it with civility. Uh, and that's in the best traditions of the United States Senate. So I think the fact that, that there would be visible memorials to him in the Senate would be a reminder to the public just how important John McCain was to our democracy. And you asked me a question about Russia earlier, the sanctions bill. I worked with Senator McCain to get that bill passed. There's so many legacies that Senator McCain has left on human rights, foreign policy, so many different areas. So so I think it is appropriate for us to remind ourselves about what he meant to the United States Senate and how we're going to miss him.